Traditional material authoring in Unreal Engine limits you to baked maps out of something like Substance or Blender. The problem with this is every object or group of objects has an individual set of maps and material. So if we have rusted metal over here and we use rusted metal again, we're duplicating a lot of information. Not only that, but we lose flexibility when we have to go back and bake new maps when we make a change. The final nail in the coffin is maps are tied to texel density, to resolution. There's a better way. In some respects, it's the future of texturing in Unreal, and we call it material layering systems. I'll break down this process into two simple steps. One is material layers. Two is material blending. I'm explaining our theory in Blender for a few reasons. One, the setup is a bit simpler than Unreal, so it's easy to see what I'm doing. And two, if you can understand how this works in two different softwares, you can lock in the unchanged concepts and filter out the quirks that are a little more software specific. To start explaining our theory in Blender, let's look at step one, material setup. Let's grab a robotic arm from offworlddepot.com. This was modeled by Bushan Jagtop. He's worked on films like Dune and Blade Runner. He's modeled this prop specifically for our site, along with some other great ones you could check out. It's a good example to show our theory. To simplify our example, I'm deleting the tarp we have here, so we're just focused on the metal material. Add a new material and delete the old one just to be thorough. By default, a material has this principled shader and a material output. We want two materials in one, so start by duplicating using Shift D, our main shader. To mix between the two shaders, we need the mix shader node. For our shaders, I'm keeping it fairly simple. I went to textures.com and found a metal texture I liked and a rust texture. Blender comes with a handy add-on called Node Wrangler. You just need to make sure it's enabled under Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and Node Wrangler. To set up a full texture, just press Control shift t with the shader selected and choose all of your images. It'll set up the entire network, including your map tiling. I'll tile my maps and get each shader set up individually. Now we have both the metal and the rust. Step two is material blending. To blend our materials dynamically, I'm using my absolute favorite procedural texture add-on in Blender. I bring it up just about every other video. It's called Fluent Materializer. And what Fluent does is within Blender, if we just press F for Fluent, we get these helpful procedural maps like this cavity map. What we could do is use this to drive the factor of our mix shader. Rather than having just a straight gradient fall off, which I hate, we can use this texture input. I'm just using a grunge texture from my site and plugging that into the texture slot. From here, we can change our distance to affect the spread of that rust. Fluent can bring out edge and cavity detail and so much more. It's worth mentioning some of the nodes it uses only work in cycles, which is Blender's ray tracing engine. So make sure you're not an EV. So we have this dynamic mask now to drive the amount of rust in Blender. Something will adapt to also work in Unreal a bit later. Traditionally, if you wanted now to take this into Unreal, you'd have to bake down each asset. The problem is in Unreal, we would lose all of the benefits we just created. But what if we could apply the same effect and the same principles in Unreal? Let's save Blender, we'll need it again, and open up a new Unreal scene. Let's start by bringing in just the same robotic arm geo. I exported a simple FBX from Blender. Now let's create a new material by simply right-clicking and creating a new material. Let's call it M underscore base for material base. Next, we need what Unreal calls a material layer. So to do that, go to materials and material layer. Let's call this ML for material layer underscore base. We'll create one base layer and then instance for additional layers. The final piece to this puzzle is our material layer blend. Just go to materials, material layer blend. We'll call this one MLB 
for material layer blend underscore base. With that out of the way, our steps are pretty similar to what we did in Blender. We need to set up our material layers and then we set up our layer blending. Let's start by double clicking our new material layer. In Blender, each material had a principled shader and input maps. In Unreal, it's no different. Let's start by dragging in the texture maps for our first material. To keep organized, I created a new folder for each set of material maps, metal and rust. Then we just need a node called make material attributes. This is basically our principled shader. However, in Unreal, we have a bit more flexibility because rather than doing this setup two times like we did in Blender, we're creating a template or base material layer that we can instance for our additional layers. Anything we plan on changing within our other layers, we need to convert to a parameter. So for example, each material has different tileable maps. So we can actually right click each map and convert to a parameter. Take a moment to name these appropriately, like albedo, normal, and so on. Now I'm only showing you two layers, but you could take everything I show you in this video and build way more complex systems. Keep in mind, Unreal has a built-in limit of 16 textures per material. With all of your blending layers, if you're exceeding that limit, another good optimization you can utilize here is something we call channel packing. If you're not familiar, channel packing is basically when we take grayscale maps like occlusion, roughness, and metalness, and we pack them into the channels of an RGB image. In some cases, an RGBA image where we use the alpha channel as well. This can help us get the most out of our maps. For my scene, I'm using occlusion into red, roughness into green, and metalness into blue. It's important to pick a standard and stick with it the whole project. You can pack single images into red, green, and blue channels in Blender's compositor, and it can help reduce memory usage in your scene, as well as help us fight off that 16 texture per material limit. The last parameter we should expose is our texture tiling. In Blender, we had a texture coordinate node, and in Unreal, we have the exact same node. Just add a multiply node by holding down M and clicking, and a single value by holding down 1 and clicking. Then multiply the value by the coordinate. Right click, and we can convert that value to a parameter as well. This exposes it so we can edit it later depending on our material layer. Let's call it tie link. Plug that into each appropriate map just like we had in Blender. Now make sure to save. To create the additional material layer, we just need to right click and create a layer instance. The next one we might call ML underscore I for material layer instance underscore rust. Since we expose the parameters in each instance, we can just swap out the maps as well as edit the tiling. Do the same for any additional layers you might be working with. Now step two, just like in Blender, is our material blending setup. In Blender, we did this with a procedural cavity node from our Fluent add-on. In Unreal, we don't have that ability. Instead, what we'll do is bake out the blend map we already created in Blender. It's actually pretty simple. Select our object and just control shift click the last node before the mix shader to isolate it. This is essentially our grayscale cavity map for blending. This drives the rust amount. To bake this out of Blender, press Shift A to add a new image texture node. This doesn't need to be plugged in anywhere. This is the image we're baking the information onto. With that in mind, let's do a 4K image called Mask 1. We don't need alpha information. Now with the desired point in our network isolated and the new image texture selected, we can go to our bake settings under render properties. Since we're isolating an area in our node graph, it's actually just emitting from the surface of the object. So we can change bake type to emit. Since emission values render rather quickly, we can change our render sample count to something like two. Also under color management, just make sure we're using a standard view transform. We don't want a color transform like AGX or filmic affecting the result of our bake. Then just press bake. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds. Within our image editor, we can find mask one and come up to image and save it wherever we need to. I saved mine as a 16 bit PNG. Remember how I mentioned channel packing earlier? 
let's actually utilize that now. So instead of one grayscale image with one blending map, why don't we just grab a few more? Take a minute to develop different sections in your node graph for different mask types. In addition to my cavity map, I'll include an edge map as well as a random per island map using the geometry node. Now create a combined color node and we can solo that. Plug our first point we identified in the node graph, our cavity map, into red. The second one, which is the edge map, into green. And our third map, the random ID map, into blue. Now keep the combined color isolated and let's just bake a new map. You could try other variations for blend maps as well. You really don't need to stick to exactly what I'm showing you. Instead of our first attempt where we just had one map, now we have the power of three, all in a single image. Pretty cool and pretty optimized. That's the power of channel packing. Back in Unreal, let's open up our material layer blend base. Just like our mix shader node in Blender, we have input A, B, and our factor, or in this case, our alpha. All we need to do is drag in our mask we just baked. From here, we create a channel mask parameter node and we go into the alpha. We want the mask to be something we can edit, so we can right click and convert this to a parameter as well. And that's all we need to do. We have red, green, and blue channels in our image. If we used the alpha channel to pack yet another fourth image, all you need to do to utilize that is to add an append vector node put RGB into A and alpha into B. In our actual material in a moment, we'll have individual control of red, green, blue, and alpha channels, or all of our blend maps. To make sure down the road, none of these mask values exceed one, just drop down a simple clamp node and make sure we have a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. I'm doing this because we could actually add something like blue on top of the green channel or we can subtract them from each other as well. If you want greater control over the mask, we could add something like a value step node after the clamp. Plug clamp into mask offset value, then plug the result into alpha. Let's create a single value. Let's convert that to a parameter we'll call mask spread. We can make the default value 0.5, the slider minimum zero and the maximum one. Plug it into gradient. This will act as a slider to spread the effect of our mask. This is something I was playing around with and it actually gave me some pretty decent results for growing and shrinking the edge mask. This is one area I know that I have more to learn. So if you've got a better note set up, please let me know in the comments. For now, this along with our mask options works pretty well. Back in our content drawer, if you had a few different blend options, you could right click this material layer blend and create an instance. In our case, I think our single image blend with the three options we already have is plenty. Now in the actual base material, this is where it all comes together. First, scroll to where it says, use material attributes and check that box. That'll simplify our setup here since we've already really defined everything we need within our individual material layers and blends. So let's go searching first we need our material attribute layers. I just searched the word layers. Then we need to get our material attributes themselves. So search get material. Lastly, we need to set our material attributes. You could probably guess search set material. This is just one of those things you'll have to remember. In my mind, it's layers, get and set. You might consider taking a screenshot here and saving it for your reference or just bookmark the video. Now, when we click on the material layers, we can see we already have a base layer. This is our background layer or our metal layer. We don't need to set anything here for now. All we need to do is click this plus button for more layers like our rust layer and click it again if you have any other additional layers you've got going. Back in the content drawer, we can finally finish this thing out. Right click our base material and create a material instance. This is finally the material that'll be applied to the metal arm. Call it MI for material instance underscore robot arm. Drag and drop this onto the mesh. When we edit the material instance, we need to drag and drop each material layer asset 
and our blend asset into the appropriate slots. Notice how when we expand either the layer or blend asset, we get all of our exposed parameters. We can change the tiling for each layer as well as the mask spread value we created. Under vector parameter values in our blend, we can see our red, green, and blue channels. Put a one by anything you'd like to use. We could, for example, have one in red and negative 0.5 in green if we wanted to subtract half of green from red. We could go as far as negative one to totally subtract one map from another. Here's an example where I created a third layer. I just instanced the existing material layer and plugged in some new maps for this chipped paint texture. Don't limit yourself here. With everything I've shown you, plus a few other techniques, you could get creative. You could do overall layers to help tie assets together, like world space driven layers. So anything below a certain point gets a layer of liquid residue. We've really only started to scratch the surface on how material layering systems optimize our scene and enhance flexibility. While I don't have time to cover every little trick in this video, please consider subscribing to my site, offworlddepot.com, and I'll continue producing videos just like this one to improve your own indie production pipeline. Thanks to my offworlddepot.com supporters, these artists really make everything possible. So special thanks to them, and I'll see you in next week's video.